A huge thank you to all the super sponsors who make it possible for me to make these videos. Visit David X Newton on Patreon to join the ASCII Brigade. In the previous videos, we've used Zscript to make monsters drop a pickup that can be collected by the player. Now we want to have a count of how many arms we've picked up visible on the screen, so let's add a basic counter to the HUD. In the Zscript world, the process of drawing things to the screen is also handled by event handlers. This time we're going to create one called Orb UI Handler, and it's going to listen for the Render Overlay event, which gets a Render event passed into it. Render Overlay is called on every frame when GZ Doom is ready to draw HUD elements on top of the rendered game world. Incidentally, there's nothing saying that we couldn't just put the monster death events and the UI drawing into one single event handler and have it handle both world thing died and render overlay, but I find it easier on the brain to make separate event handlers for different things. To write this function, we need to be a little aware of Doom's multiplayer nature. We don't necessarily have just one player object, and there may be several. So here we need to know which player we're drawing the HUD for so we can retrieve the number of red orbs from their inventory. Players can always be retrieved from the global array called Players as listed in the Globals page at ZDoom Docs. The number identifying the position of the current player who's running GZDoom in that array is available under the name Console Player. The Players array stores a collection of player info objects which describe the state of players in the game. At the time I'm putting this video together, the documentation for them hasn't been finished yet, but the properties on them can be found in the Zscript source code. Each player info has a reference to a corresponding player pawn object under the property called MO. The difference between what's stored on the player info versus the player pawn is a bit of a blurry line, but the player pawn is the actor object that moves about and represents the player's presence in the level. As the player pawn is an actor and actors can have inventory, that's where we want to go for the player's inventory. So in total, the first line of this function has to get the console player item out of the global players array, get its MO property, and then save that to our variable called P. We then call COUNTINV on our player pawn to count how many Doom orbs our current player is carrying. This is one of the Zscript actor functions listed on the ZDoom wiki. Having got that count, we now want to display it. There are multiple ways to put something on the screen in ZDoom, but we're going to use a function called drawString that exists on the status bar variable that's available globally. Using the status bar object to display things comes with the advantage that it will automatically scale and move according to the player's status bar configuration. First, we need to call the status bar's begin HUD function. This will prepare the status bar object to draw to anywhere on the screen instead of just within the confines of the on screen status bar. Now we can look at what we need for the draw string call. In the simplest case, it needs to know the font to use, the string to display, the position on the screen to display it, and any flags that should affect how the string is drawn. Fonts in GZ Doom are set up in a font defs lump, but there are several default ones that we can use to speed things up, listed on the wiki's font page. We'll use the small font associated with the current game, which is the one that's used for the level name and statistics on the auto map. This is available to us from anywhere under the name small font. We actually need to do a bit of setup before we use the small font because draw string specifically requires a HUD font. This is a special kind of font object that includes some extra data about how to display the characters on a HUD. So to start with, we'll call the static create method on the HUD font and pass the small font into that. This will give us a HUD font object that we can use as our first parameter to draw string. The next parameter is what to display, so we'll give it the count of orbs that we just worked out from the player. Next, we need to specify the coordinates where we want the string to be displayed. As usual in Zscript, these aren't two separate arguments, they're in the form of a vector2, which is like a vector3 but only uses x and y coordinates. You can adjust this to your preference, but I'm going to use these coordinates. The fourth parameter we'll use is the flags, which can be used to specify where the coordinates should be counted as starting from, and how to align the text. If the following means anything to you, this is a bit mask field where flags can be combined with a bitwise OR operator. If it didn't, it's a set of keywords that are separated with a pipe character. The flags available to us here are listed on the drawstring ZDoom wiki page. We're going to use two of them together. We want the coordinates we've specified to be counted from the top left of the screen, and as we're displaying a number, we want the text to be aligned to the right. Finally, if you like, you can specify a translation or colour for the text. This works in much the same way as in ACS. The constants representing colours are defined in Zscript's font class, and they have the same names as the constants used for colours in ACS. 
So with that large information dump out the way, that's our call to draw string written. We now need to remember to add this new event handler to the map info lumps game info section in the same way we did the monster death event handler. With that in place, let's try to start up GZ Doom again, and you'll find that it doesn't. So why is that? It turns out Zscript is a bit picky about types of variables. Our orbs variable is a number and not a string. While we as humans might think it fairly obvious how to express a number as a string, the computer won't do it unless we've specifically asked it to. So let's do that now. There are a couple of ways to do this. One possibility is to use the string format function. This behaves a lot like console printf does, taking a string with a set of placeholders and then a list of variables to swap in. To convert our number to a string without further embellishment, you could use the percent %d placeholder to represent a number. If you feel like it, you could also use this to add some text with the count, such as prepending it with orbs. Another quick way to convert a number to a string is to append an empty string onto it, and this will do the conversion automatically. In Zscript, the concatenation operator is two dots, therefore you could use this kind of arrangement to force the int orbs variable to be treated as a string. Whichever way you choose to do it, starting up GZ Doom again will now give you the counter in the corner. You should also be able to go into the HUD scaling options and see the counter scaling up along with your status bar. That's our orb count on the screen, but it's looking a bit lost out there, so let's add an image in the background to give it some grounding. The download for this tutorial includes a possible image called HUD Orb, but again you might want to provide your own. Drawing an image to the screen is very similar to how we drew the text, and this time we're going to use the status bar's draw image function. There's no font to worry about this time. This function just takes the name of the lump representing the graphic to draw, the vector 2 for coordinates, and a set of flags describing its alignment. The number of possible flags is a bit larger than for text, because in addition to specifying where on the screen your coordinates should originate from, you also need to define the origin point of your image file. Even though the wiki says that elements are drawn from their top left corner by default, I found that it drew my graphic from the centre, so I used the di item top and di item Item left flags to adjust it. Note also that if you're using a graphic which is meant to go behind the drawn text, the draw image line has to come before draw string in the render overlay function. Later elements will be drawn on top of earlier ones. There's one more addition you might want to make. As my own example displays in the top left corner, it interferes with the statistics displayed on the automap when it's called up. To avoid this, you can check the global variable automap active and just return from the function early without doing anything if that's true. With that in place, our additions won't display when the automap is active. And those are some examples of how to draw text and graphics onto the screen in Zscript. You can check the draw image and draw string pages for further possibilities. If you play at a large resolution, you might want to look at the options you have for scaling the elements. Again, the scaling is specified as a vector 2, and I've doubled the resolution in both dimensions in my final code here. So now, using just three Zscript classes, we've added a new pickup and mechanic to the game and adjusted the HUD to accommodate it. Next, we'll look at player input in order to make these orbs do something useful.